Hey everyone, hope you're doing okay. Not too stressed with being cooped up inside or not able to speak to the friends and loved ones. I hope that you're coping all right. Well, this is the second of our weekly talks that I'm going to be putting out each Friday, hopefully. And if you're not quite sure you got them in the right order, then just have a look at the length of my beard and they might just form a bit of a sequence. Well, I was praying about what to talk to you about this week and I came to the topic of thankfulness. Studies have shown that thankful people live longer, are happier and have better quality relationships. Sound good? I'm a bit of a Facebook addict, I have to admit, I'm not proud of it. And there is a lot of rubbish on there, but sometimes there's some really good things that people share. And this week someone put this on Facebook. If you have food in the fridge, clothes on your back, a roof over your head and a place to sleep, then you are more comfortable than 75% of the world's population. If you have money in the bank, in your wallet and in a spare dish somewhere, then you're among the 8% most wealthy people in the world. If you can read this, then you're more blessed than over 2 billion people in the world who cannot read properly. If you woke up this morning healthy, then you're more blessed than millions who will not survive the week. And so it goes on. I'm not sure how accurate the statistics are or how up to date, but you get the idea. St Paul put it this way in Colossians 2. He said one of the secrets of a happy life is to be overflowing with thankfulness. Why? It seems a little perverse to talk about thankfulness during a national crisis. Well, because having an attitude of gratitude does something to your soul. Jews have a festival called Purim. It's an ancient festival, it actually comes from the book of Esther. And one day a year they get together and just celebrate, give thanks. It's a wonderful thing. So much of Jewish history has been war-torn, even today. For many years they were prisoners of war in Babylon, which is now Iraq. Can't have been much fun. Yet Purim remained, giving thanks despite your circumstances. When I was a child we had a little family tradition and that was that we celebrated when things went wrong. Because my dad used to say, well, when things go well, you're happy enough as it is. So if we got some bad news, we'd go out and have a meal together and find things to be thankful for. I realise that times are hard and for some this is a really, really tough time. And I don't want to trivialise that. But the principle is this. Nothing, not COVID-19 or anything else, nothing has the right to rob us of our joy, of our right to be thankful. You see, the problem with staying at home all day, particularly if, like me, you kind of have News 24 on the background, hour after hour, listening for the death toll as it increases and everything gets worse and worse, is that that also does something to your soul. I was listening to a song yesterday and, and one of the lines just really stood out to me and it was this, you can get addicted to a certain kind of sadness. And that's so true. You can develop a, a negative spirit, a cynical attitude. And that affects our well-being, that affects our relationships, even the very quality and direction of our lives. And so in, as this crisis unfolds, the big difference is not just between those who have COVID and those who don't. There's also a big difference between people's response to it. Someone put it, life is 10% what happens to us and 90% our response to what happens to us. But having a thankfulness attitude changes your whole mindset. It forces you to find things to be thankful for, find things that are going well, find the positive in each day, rather than always focusing on just what's going wrong, just what we don't have. So how do we do it? Well, the secret of a thankfulness attitude is learning to want what you have, 
rather than always trying to have what you want. The world says happiness is all about having what you want. It's the basis of all advertising. They get you to want something and then they tell you how to have it. Faster car, sexier image, bigger TV. In fact, I was in Tesco a little while ago before the lockdown and there was a couple arguing in the electronics aisle and I sort of sidled on nearby and listened in just in case it was useful for one of my talks. And the husband was trying to persuade his wife to buy a new 60 inch TV. Look, darling, he said, look at the price. It's never going to be that price again. We've had our TV for years. But John said his wife, we only came in for a pint of milk. In other words, if you always want more, then you never have enough. St. Paul again in Philippians 4 puts it this way. He says, I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. And then he says this, I have learned the secret of being content, whether well-fed or in need, whether having plenty or in want. What a thing. And isn't it encouraging that even the great St. Paul said it's something he had to learn. It doesn't come naturally. The philosopher R.W. Emerson said this, if the stars only came out one night a year, we'd all stay up to watch them. But as it is, they come out every night and we never stay up. You see, the Bible teaches us to love people and use things. So often we use people and love things. And isn't it true that the easiest things to take for granted are the things we love? The most. I read of a doctor who was taking his son round the supermarket on a Saturday morning. He'd had a busy day in surgery, he had lots to do in the house, and so they were rushing round getting their things. And all the way around the supermarket, the son was saying, Dad, Dad, and the father just ignored him. He was just so focused on getting his shopping done. The son started pulling on Dad's coat, Dad, Dad, he ignored him. Then the son had an idea. He took a few steps back, he deepened his voice, and he said, Doctor, his father swung round to attention and the man writing it said that happened 15 years ago and now my son doesn't talk to me. Ouch. You see Paul didn't just write to churches he also wrote to individuals and two of the letters in the Bible are to his student Timothy. He was training him to be a leader and he writes this he says Timothy I don't just want you to be godly in verse 6 he says this 1 Timothy 6 verse 6 he says but godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into this world and we can take nothing out of this world but if you have food and clothes on your back you should be content with that so during the coming week how about we all look out for things to be thankful for teenage kids driving you up the wall then of course they need discipline but why not also catch them doing something right, doing something vaguely well and praise them for it? If you're struggling in your marriage, suddenly you're having to spend more time together. Look out for what's good in the other person. Perhaps a, a small act of kindness rather than taking it for granted. Thank them for it. At work, maybe you're working remotely at the moment and it's getting a bit tense trying to do it all online and through conference messaging. Try, if you possibly can, to hear what others say in the best possible light, rather than always through a lens of suspicion. This is something I still need to learn sometimes. We're all broken people. We're all dealing with our own insecurities. So if you possibly can, let people off the hook, not just for their benefit, but also for your own. So why be thankful? Well, because it's good for you. It changes your whole attitude. How to be thankful, it's learning to want what you already have rather than always trying to have what you want. And final little point is who? Who are we thankful to? If there's no God, who do we have to thank for all the wonderful things in our life, for the, the gift of new life, for the beauty of each day, for so many things that we take for granted? You know, the Bible says that you are not an accident. That you are made for a purpose and that there's a God in heaven who loves you just for who you are.
and has a wonderful plan for your life. Let me say that again. The Bible says you are not an accident. You were made for a purpose. There's a God who loves you just for who you are and has a wonderful plan for your life. King David put it beautifully in a poem which is normally called Psalm 139 and he wrote this. Lord, you've searched me and you know me. You know when I sit, when I rise, you know my thoughts from afar. You're familiar with all my ways. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, still your love finds me. Even there, your hand will guide me. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days of my life were written in your book before I came into being. And then he ends like this. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. You see, most people don't think like that. Most of us want to enjoy the creation without reference to the creator. So when Bart Simpson says grace, he says, dear God, we paid for all this stuff ourselves, so thanks for nothing. And that kind of summarises the spirit of the age. But the Bible says that all good gifts ultimately come from God. And the only appropriate response is gratefulness. Jesus himself puts it like this, Luke 10, 20. You always have a reason to rejoice if your name is written in heaven. So the final verse is the most famous verse in the world. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That's the heart of the Christian faith. 25 words. Starts with God and ends with life. God loved. God gave. We believe. We live. For a Christian, that's the ultimate reason to be thankful. I want to close by showing you a beautiful film clip. The words are by the Austrian Benedictine monk, Brother David. And it's set to images from the award-winning time-lapse photographer, Louis Schwartzberg. So sit back and enjoy gratitude. You think this is just another day in your life? It's not just another day. It's the one day that is given to you today. It's given to you. It's a gift. It's the only gift that you have right now. And the only appropriate response is gratefulness. If you do nothing else but to cultivate that response to the great gift that this unique day is, if you learn to respond as if it were the first day in your life, and the very last day, then you will have spent this day very well. Begin by opening your eyes and be surprised that you have eyes you can open. That incredible array of colors that is constantly offered to us for pure enjoyment. Look at the sky 
we so rarely look at the sky. We so rarely note how different it is from moment to moment with clouds coming and going. We just think of the weather. And even of the weather, we don't think of all the many nuances of weather. We just think of good weather and bad weather. This day, right now, it's unique weather. Maybe a kind that will never exactly in that form come again. The formation of clouds in the sky will never be the same that is right now. Open your eyes, look at that. Look at the faces of people whom you meet. Each one has an incredible story behind their face. A story that you could never fully fathom. Not only their own story, but the story of their ancestors. We all go back so far. And in this present moment, on this day, all the people you meet, all that life from generations and from so many places all over the world, flows together and meets you here like a life-giving water if you only open your heart and drink. Open your heart to the incredible gifts that civilization gives to us. You flip a switch and there is electric light. You turn a faucet and there is warm water and cold water and drinkable water. It's a gift that millions and millions in the world uh, will never experience. So these are just a few of an enormous number of gifts to which we can open your heart. And so I wish you that you will open your heart to all these blessings and let them flow through you. That everyone whom you will meet on this day will be blessed by you. Just by your eyes, by your smile, by your touch, just by your presence. Let the gratefulness overflow into blessing all around you. And then it will really be a good day. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I want to pray for my friends watching this video that you would bless them and keep them. Make your face to shine upon them. I pray that you would help them to recognise all the gifts that you've given us and where they come from. Lord, I pray for those who are in particular need. I pray that they would have all they need. I pray that they wouldn't be afraid to ask for help. But also, may we learn to want what we already have and maybe not always need to have what we want. So we give our lives over to you, we turn to you and invite you to give us your spirit of contentment through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you. Have a great weekend.